It is your vote, voice, your vote. We are less than two weeks away now from the November election. Candidates in the biggest local race certainly would like your vote. That's the race for Spokane Mayor David Condon challenging incumbent Mayor Mary Verner. And David Condon is with me now. And a uh, couple questions for you. All, All right. right. I uh, saw an email recently that showed a recent poll has you within four points of the mayor. That's a huge change from the primary when she beat you two to one. Um, what do you have to say about that? Well, you know, we just continued with uh, what we had started with and still knocking on doors and still carrying the same message of making sure that we have accountability in the, in the mayor's office and really show leadership out of the mayor's office. And it's starting to uh, resonate as uh, people get closer to the election. Four points. This could be a dead heat. It is. Uh, you know, that's what uh, our polling shows, and we're excited about that yeah. as uh, we close in on the, in the last couple of weeks of the election. Can you reveal who uh, was behind the poll? No, there was an internal poll, and, okay. uh, and so we were just looking at where we were and how our messaging was doing. And uh, like I said, uh, the, the folks uh, that I've talked to, and now I think our campaign is upward of 17,000 doors knocked on. We're huh. phone banking. We're sign waving. We're, uh, we'll be out there this weekend knocking on doors again. Jobs is a big uh, issue for you, and a lot of your supporters are realtors, builders. Um, what do you have in plan to create jobs? You know, absolutely. Spokane? I think the, uh, the business community does want somebody in the mayor's office that understands uh, business. I grew up in small business, ran, started my own uh, companies. And I think we do need, you know, the, the city hall does need to uh, move at the, at the pace of business and not in government. And they really have, uh, the businesses really have felt like they have not had been welcomed in city hall. And I plan on, if you're creating jobs, uh, you're going to be welcomed at city hall. Talk about the budget, $8 million in the red for 2012. The mayor says that she plans to release her plan next week, which includes no new revenue. What would you do to increase revenue or create new revenue? You know, revenue? From, from the beginning of this campaign, I've talked about we do need to sit down with our, our bargaining units and make sure that, you know, as our, as our citizens and as our businesses are not seeing the uptick, we have to sit down with, uh, with the employees and make sure that we can balance our budget. Secondly, I'm, you know, I'm a, a big proponent of looking uh, to our partners at the county and seeing where we can streamline and, and work with the county. And finally, you know, ultimately, we do need to set priorities. We do need to, you know, um, police and fire and, you know, the basics uh, of government and libraries and our parks. Um, you know, that's what people are talking about. And the final one, streets, you know, that was from the get-go. And I think we do need to be f uh, frank with the public and talk about uh, what we need to prioritize. On the subject of collective bargaining, um, a strong mayor, you say, should stand up to city unions. The police guild, are, are the unions just too strong? Can you deal with it? Well, you know, I think we're in interesting times now. I've talked to a lot of city employees. I've been knocked on their doors. You know, and I, I think, you know, we have a great workforce at the city, um, mm -hmm. but the reality is we do need to make that look similar to the uh, private sector when we're dealing with uh, the unions. You see what the governor is dealing with. You see, you know, other municipalities that are pegging, you know, cost of living adjustments to certain indexes, like a CPI index. And I think that's great for the employee and for the employer. They know that their cost of living adjustments are actually going to be associated with the cost of living and not necessarily a political football being 5%, 3% or what have you. And so I think it actually works out better. And so that's what I'd be looking at. Mm -hmm. And I'd be sitting down with them, being fair, um, but also being realistic of what the citizens can afford. We, we have a community with an average income of somewhere between 34 and 37,000, and you know, the, the room isn't there to, uh, to pay higher taxes and fees. You've been vocal about the mayor's handling of the Otto Zem case, also the water rate schedule. Is there anything she's done right? You know, she has, <laughs> uh, you know, she has, she came into office, um, but, you know, and has taken over the city um, and in a, in a difficult time. But I do believe that we could have made different decisions. You know, I came into this campaign early on talking about the water rates. It was bad policy from the get go. And I've asked the mayor, why didn't she, she veto this? She said she thought it was bad too, but waited until it really hurt the citizens to really take action and really treat it more politically than really if we understood that it was bad po policy. She is the strong mayor. She could have vetoed that and put it back to the drawing table and, and asked the council to relook it, you know, wait, you know, before it even took effect. Yeah, well, it's happening now. But exactly. all right, David Condon, thanks so much for Thank joining you. us. We'll be talking with Mayor Mary Verner tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. You want to watch that. You can see any of our uh, interviews on our website. Just go to KXLI.com.